This educational webinar is presented by Milford Asset Management. They will do a quick review of two New Zealand famous companies, Fisher & Paykel and Main Freight. If you enjoy this kind of content, please make sure you subscribe, hit the like button to let me know that you want more information like that. Thank you. Today I'm going to cover off the performance of the NZX50 uh, through COVID-19 and provide you a bit of colour around what's been happening underneath the surface of the market. Firstly, a stock that has been a clear beneficiary of COVID-19 and secondly, a company that has made the most of the situation. So to begin with, we all know that New Zealand has uh, performed well in terms of the way it's handled the health side of COVID-19. We have been the envy of, of many countries and have certainly outperformed in terms of our number of cases per capita. Um, but that hasn't translated, as you can see here, in terms of share market outperformance. So this slide compares the NZX50 index versus the S&P 500. And by and large, the, the two markets have performed in line th throughout this year. But underneath the surface, there has been a significant mix or divergence in returns. So what we set out here is the performance of the individual companies that make up the NZX50 during the course of the year. And the NZX as a whole is up 4%, but as you can see in this chart, the far left-hand side, the tail of it, illustrates that, that, that there are a number of companies which are down 30, 40, 50% um, so far this year. And by and large, they are companies that are, the, that are in the eye of the COVID-19 storms. That's the likes of Auckland Airport in New Zealand and uh, Kathmandu that have really been hit, hit hard by what is going on. Lucky for the NZX, there's been a handful of companies that have been uh, beneficiaries or winners um, of COVID-19. And that includes Frisch & Paykel Healthcare. So that is the largest stock in the market and it is, it is up 67% so far this year. So without it, the NZX would have fallen about 5% so far. So what's so special about Frisch & Paykel Healthcare and why have they performed so well this year? Well, firstly, they are uh, respiratory and humidification experts. And luckily for them, COVID-19 is a respiratory illness. So here we have a patient in an ICU unit um, in a hospital who's just been fitted with their nasal cannula, their high flow OptiFlow na nasal cannula, which is used, has, been, has become uh, the frontline treatment or one of the frontline treatments for COVID-19 across the globe um, throughout this pandemic. The second photo here is a is their manufacturing site in Auckland, um, out in East Tamaki, where they have added 600 extra staff and basically been running the plant at full capacity since March to, to keep up uh, with, their, with, the, with the demand globally for their product. So why is Fish & Paykel so special? Look, it's this product here. This is called OptiFlow. On the left-hand side is the nasal cannula that is fitted to patients to help them breathe and help them release and relax their lungs when they have a respiratory illness. It provides high flow oxygen or air to them in a humidified format um, and has, has a greatly assisted the treatment of COVID-19 patients. On the right is the uh, humidifier unit that is attached to the OptiFlow nasal cannula that is hooked up to them and helps provide this. And this product had been growing for Fish & Paykel Healthcare for 20, at 20% per annum um, in terms of sales revenue growth over the past couple of years, and it has really accelerated because of COVID-19. We held the stock and the funds um, pre-COVID pre on this basis and on the opportunity that OptiFlow represented. Um, Fish & Paykel Healthcare has over 50 years of R&D to support product development like this. The CEO has been with the company 37 years um, and part of that R&D team creating these products. So there's a huge wealth of information and a strong barrier to entry there, preventing um, competition coming in. The effect that COVID-19, I think, has had on their business is best illustrated by this slide here. So this is the sales of that humidification unit or hardware unit that uh, Fish & Paykel has had over the past few years. And then at the AGM that they held in August this year, they indicated that their hardware sales were up 390% um, year to date. And that is that boom that COVID has created for them. And as you can see here, this has translated into some significant um, share price outperformance from, from Fisher and Puckle Healthcare, the plus 67% versus the NZX50 index, and has generated that attractive return. 
So we, we continue to increase our position in Fish and Particle Healthcare in March this year um, on the back of what we knew about the company and the opportunity that COVID presented for them. The key question now for us is really, is COVID um, just a one-off sales kick, kick or, or do all the, all, the hundred, all the thousands of doctors and nurses that now know how to use their OptiFlow product, will they continue to use that going forward and will accelerate their growth into future years? So a lot of our research remains focused very much on, these, on that, answering that question. Sorry to interrupt. If you enjoy this content, make sure you subscribe so you do not miss the next one and hit this like button to let me know that you want more information like this. Thank you. All right, the second company I want to talk to you about is one that has made the best of the COVID-19 situation, and that is Main Freight. So they uh, provide domestic freight, freight forwarding, warehousing to their customers across Australia, New Zealand, the US and Europe. Here you have a picture inside one of their warehouses of, a, of one of their trucks being loaded. Um, this occurs daily throughout their global network. Why we like Main Freight, and we have held the stock in the fund for many, many years, is firstly, it has a very, very uh, long runway of growth ahead of it. It is a global expansion story, and it has slowly expanded from New Zealand into Australia, into the US, and now into Europe, and that network continues to be built out. And behind that, it has an incredible, impressive culture. Um, that is set by the CEO, Don Braid. It is about empowering the employees to make their own decisions in the best interests of the business. And it is continuous a culture of continuous improvement. So each employee knows what his contr uh, contribution to the business has been over the past week, month, year, and is incentivized to improve that every day going forward. This is a graphic here that I found within their 40-year uh, celebration document, and I think it really highlights some of those facets within the business. So you can see that they started off in 1978 with two men, one branch, and $7,000 in Auckland, and now it is truly a global business across 22 countries, 7,500 employees, and a massive, massive market cap compared to that $7,000 that it started off with. Now, Main Freight, um, did very much feel the impact of lockdowns um, in New Zealand and across the globe. And in April they came out and said, look, our sales revenue for the year has declined by 7% year to date. And in New Zealand, we're down particularly hard, we're down 40%. And that wasn't a surprise given the lockdown, but in terms of our position and our thinking on the, on the stock, it was those features of the long-term global uh, growth story and the culture, which we felt would put them in very good shape to, to pull through it. And speaking to Don and his team, they were very focused on, on continuing to do what they did during times of downturn and then maintain that culture, maintain the employees and look, really look after them. So through the GFC, they did not let anyone go and they very much intended to do that through COVID-19. And that outcome and that incentive and that, that and culture that Main Freight had put them in such good place that they managed to take significant market share through this period. So, this is best illustrated by their trading update that they put out at the AGM later on this year in July, where they illustrated that their sales and, uh, revenue was up 8% across the business year to date, and their profit before tax was up 20%. So again, that culture came through and they generated huge market share gains versus their weaker competitors. So Main Freight remains a, a core holding through in, our in our NZ funds, and that culture and the reasons we held it really shone through during COVID.